What's going on, movie goers? If you're new to the channel, my name is Christian. Welcome to Sea World Productions. John Bernthal teases his return as the Punisher in the MCU. I cannot wait, you guys. Daredevil Born Again is going to be a game changer for the Disney Plus Marvel shows. I'm telling you, I love the fact that they're taking everything from scratch and embracing what Netflix had already established and adding onto that, but more so of a soft reboot. And to have John Bernthal's The Punisher return, I mean, come on. He was so beloved in those Marvel Netflix shows. His performance, his character, everything. He just embodied everything I think Frank Castle is in the comic book. So I can't wait to see my boy John Bernthal return, you guys. It's going to be so exciting. But another news, you guys. Apparently, John Watts is officially not returning to the MCU to direct Spider-Man 4. This is coming from Daniel RPK, you guys. A reliable inside scooper. And he dropped some massive scoops yesterday. Now, look. I loved what John Watts did with his trilogy. It was fun. But this is a whole new chapter in Peter Parker's life. And I need to see a very different stylistic approach to these next and upcoming Spider-Man films. Potentially a Spider-Man trilogy. You know, apparently Sony wanted to bring John Watts back, but Kevin Feige didn't. And it sounds like Kevin Feige won on that aspect and they're looking for a brand new director for Spider-Man 4. You know, there were still the rumors how there, there was that conflict, how Sony wanted to do another massive multiverse storyline and, you know, Kevin Feige and Tom Holland wanted to make it more grounded for Spider-Man 4. I am on the side of Kevin Feige and Tom Holland because there's no need to do another massive No Way Home film for a Spider-Man 4. Keep it grounded in reality. You know, you're, you, you're just establishing your street levels with Daredevil Born Again coming. Kingpin's going to be mayor. There are so much stuff you can do with that. So hopefully it's going to be a grounded story. But who should be directing the new Spider-Man film? I know it was rumored that, you know, Drew Goddard was a potential you know candidate to, to direct. I mean, he directed Cabin in the Woods, which I think is so underappreciated. Um, and he also he was an executive producer on, you know, the Daredevil Netflix series, which, you know, everybody loves. So I think he would be a good get for Marvel to direct Spider-Man 4. But I can't wait for Spider-Man 4. It's, it's, it, I feel like it's going to be so drastically different, you know, because he's a much older Peter now. He's, he's gone through so much of losing his Aunt May, his Uncle Ben, Tony. He's in a, an emotional state going into these next films where the symbiote is going to latch onto him and take, take, you know, take advantage of those emotions because he's not going to be there fully. You know what I mean? He's not going to be pulling back his punches. Because there's going to be some bitterness, some anger that is built up within Peter, which I can't wait for them to explore. And I know Tom Holland can deliver a performance of a lifetime in Spider-Man for you guys. But moving on, apparently Marvel Studios wants Sean Levy to direct more projects in the MCU because of how highly they are impressed with Deadpool and Wolverine. Look, Deadpool and Wolverine is going to be a juggernaut of a film, no pun intended. It is going to be ginormous. It is going to be such a massive hit. The hit that the Marvel Studios brand absolutely needs right now because it is struggling on us, all aspects of life, I feel like. You know, Echo, I, I personally enjoyed Echo, but it wasn't like a fan favorite. You know, people aren't talking about Echo anymore, you know. So I'm really hoping we're Daredevil. I mean, Daredevil. <laughs> Deadpool and Wolverine, you know, it will literally put Marvel back on the right track. And, you know, the next project after that is not, you know, what, Captain America? Brave? No, well, if you want to include the Disney Plus stuff, we have X-Men uh, 97. That drops literally, I think, next week, which I can't wait for. I've tried to watch, you know, the, you know, the, the previous seasons, but I'm like, I just can't get through it. There's too many damn episodes. I'm such a busy man. I'm like, I can't, I don't have time to sit through all this and watch it. So maybe I'll watch the last couple episodes of the latest season just to catch up on, you know, um, at the X-Men animated series before X-Men 97. And then later this year, we have Agatha coming out. But, you know, I don't think that's going to be a pivotal storyline to the whole multiverse saga moving forward. But, you know, the MCU definitely needs more wins. You know, and if Sean Levy's coming back to direct more projects, I think you give him Avengers Secret Wars. Because if he's, if he's already established his multiverse storyline in Deadpool and Wolverine, and this is a massive multiverse storyline... And he's handling all these characters well and, and the plots and the dialogue and the action sequences. Maybe you let Sean Levy direct Avengers Secret Wars. I think that would be a brilliant idea because I don't know if Sam Raimi's going to be directing, you know, the next Avengers films. That was a rumor. But then he's been talking about directing Spider-Man 4. I'd much, have, much rather have him direct Spider-Man 4 than in any Avengers movie because, you know, 
finish out the conclusion for your Spider-Man. Get the redemption. Get the redemption. And apparently it was, what, 15 years ago that Spider-Man 4 was announced? That never happened, you guys? Oh, it hurts so much. It hurts. But you know what? Everything happens for a reason, and that is what I will say. But moving on, you guys. Shang-Chi 2. We got a small little update. Now, apparently, it will deal with time travel. And also, we will get an appearance of the Iron Fist. Now, is this Danny Rand from the Marvel Netflix Iron Fist? Because if so, that's a problem. I think he's the only character who will not be returning to his character uh, from the Netflix series. How, you know, they're kind of slowly bridging those characters over in the MCU. I do think that Danny Rand in that particular series won't be returning because he wasn't a fan favorite. Iron Fist definitely was the least beloved show out of those Marvel Netflix series. And I'm completely okay with them completely recasting. But there was that rumor not too long ago how, you know, the Iron Fist was going to be, you know, gender swap for a woman. And, you know, I don't know how you guys feel about that. You know, how, how do you feel about them, you know, completely going in a different direction for Iron Fist and not doing Danny Rand and not recasting and gender swapping the character for Shang-Chi 2. I'm, like, I'm still excited for Shang-Chi 2. I can't wait. The first film was extraordinary. Uh, uh, Dustin Daniel Creighton did a wonderful job. You know, he's busy doing Wonder Man and he's busy... What was he doing? Avatar? Is he doing Avatar? No. Naruto? He's doing some animated project um, live action for Netflix. So I'm like, how does he have time for, you know, this particular... This particular series. It's going to be interesting to see what happens with that. But Iron Fist is also rumored to be appearing in the eyes of Wakanda, the, the Disney Plus animated show starring Denai Guerrero as Okoye. I'm like, well, where does he have a place in, you know, the eyes of Wakanda? But, you know, throughout Wakandan history, brave warriors have been tasked to travel the world retrieving dangerous vibranium artifacts. So she could travel to Kung Lun and, you know, potentially, you know, you know, see Danny Rand and the Iron Fist. It's it's a it's a potential, you know what I mean? But I'm still excited for anything Wakanda based. You know, Ryan Coogler definitely has his 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 handprints, you know, on all of that stuff. And I think you, you let Ryan Coogler keep cooking with whatever is involved with, you know, the Wakandans and Black Panther. You don't let anybody else touch that because that is his baby right there. Black Panther wouldn't be anything without Ryan Coogler and Chadwick Boseman and that full cast and that creative team. It's just you know, it's it's a beauty to see this whole world unravel. And the fact that it's going to be an animated series, if I'm being honest with you, I'd rather much see a live action version of that with Denai Guerrero, you know, for her, her character Okoye. Because, you know, come on, it's Okoye, it's Denai Guerrero, you know, she's a midnight angel right now, you know. But it's going to be interesting to see what happens with that, you guys. But post your comments down below. Let me know what you guys think about today's topics. What do you think about John Bernthal's returning? As the Punisher in the MCU, what do you think about John Watts officially out directing Spider-Man 4? Post your comments down below, and thank you for taking time out of your day for watching SeaWorld Productions. Peace.